Welcome back everyone. Welcome to Lippy Logic. My name is Dr. David Amron. This is an educational series for lipedema and today's topic is about fibrosis. It is such an important topic and, and it is a huge, huge part of what is going on in lipedema. And it's not only about fat, as I've mentioned. This has been termed a fat disorder. There's a term lipedema. I've said for years that I wish the term fibro was in it. We called it lipofibroedema. It's actually more accurate and sounds like a real disease. But it's a huge part of what's going on with lipedema. And, and really, it's, it's really the main culprit of things that are going on, actually bad things that are going on. It's causing a lot of the pain from the chronic inflammation, which we're going to look at. It is it is beginning to affect things. Um, like I've said before, with liposuction surgeries, we're gonna talk about it in other segments, it's not just only how much fat you can remove, it's how well the surgeon has dealt with the fibrosis. It's one of the unique parts of lipedema that's separate apart from just cosmetic liposuction, fibrosis. But fibrosis, what is fibrosis? Fibrosis is a fancy medical term for scar tissue scarring. It's made up of dense collagen and dense connective tissue that becomes hard uh, in areas. And it, it, it creates a lot of problems with lipidium, like I mentioned. So I want to go through the, the pathophysiology of lipidema, uh, my opinions about it, because we don't know every single component of it, but I think I have a pretty good handle of what's going on with lipidema. So for that, we're going to go to Professor Lippi and get some education from him. I want to welcome our senior expert scientific advisor of Lippy Logic, Professor Lippy. Yes, thank you very, very much, Dr. Amaran, for having me today. That's Dr. Amaran. That's what I said, Dr. Amaran. Anyways, today, Professor Lippy is going to share with us his ideas on the pathogenesis of lipedema. Yes. I'm going to share my, my thoughts, my, my hypotheses, my theories on the pathogenesis of lipedema. Okay, let's go. Well, the story all begins right here. The, 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 leaky, the leaky lymphatics. What seems to happen is if you eat things like gluten and stuff like that and other sugars, the, the fluids, they, they move out of the lymphatics and they go in. They go into the subcutaneous tissue, the stem cells actually. The stem cells move out into the fat and then they start to turn into pre-adipocytes. Yes, that they start mitotically, mitotically replicating, dividing, dividing. And then they then can't, they can't live. They die because they divide so fast by hydropic degeneration, they, they just die off. But you got stuff there, and crud, things like that, that, that you, get, you get the inflammation next. The inflammation, they come in, all the, the in, inflammatory warriors, they start battling with the stuff there, and these are macrophages. They're specific cells that start cleaning the stuff up, but they inside chronic, chronic inflammation. The chronic inflammation then leads to something we call fibrosis. And fibrosis is like, like tough stuff. It's scar tissue and it's hard and it makes things worse. And then you get the increase, increasing congestion of the tissues. And up, up goes the hydrostatic pressure in the tissues. And then you get into a vicious a very vicious cycle of this. It goes on and on and round and round and round. And these, these are my thoughts, my hypothesis, and my theory on the pathogenesis of the lipedema. Okay, well, until next time, I'm Professor Lippi. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dr. Lippi. That was really wonderful, that explanation of, of fibrosis and, and what's going on here. Um, so as you can see, the fibrosis creates lots of problems. It, it, it makes the tissue harder, it increases the congestion. It begins to strangulate things. Um, it, it, it affects the lymphatic flow. Eventually, um, when lymphatics um, get enough congestion and fibrosis around them, they begin to break down. 
and that can turn into something called lipolymphedema that many of you know about in its end stage. Um, and that's why it's important to improve and release the fibrosis. Um, it begins to strangulate other things. A lot of patients have, have worsening varicose veins or worsening venous insufficiency because of the congestion in the tissue. Um, in my experience, uh, patients that have a lot of vein involvement and venous insufficiency in varicose veins, if you try or, or a surgeon tries to treat those things first, many times they're gonna fail because unless you release the fibrosis first, um, it's not a way of dealing with the venous issues um, that way. You wanna release the fibrosis first. There are four patterns of fibrosis that I have um, identified. And, and I'm identifying this because I am in there dealing with these patients and dealing with these clinical patterns of fibrosis. Um, many years ago, I've suggested developing a fiber scale, which is something I think we actually should consider doing because some patients are not fibrous at all. Other patients can be very fibrous. Like I've mentioned also, it's not always dependent on the severity or the stage of the disease. A stage one patient can have a lot of fibrosis and a stage four patient may be very soft and fluffy and not have a lot of fibrosis. But there are four patterns of fibrosis that I have seen surgically. Pattern one is more of a nodular type of fibrosis, uh, what are so-called lippy nodules. Typically they're anywhere between two to about four millimeters in size, those lipidema nodules. Another pattern of fibrosis is more of a dense pattern where patients just, it's almost like cement when you go in there. It's, they're, not as, they're not as nodular, it's just a very dense pattern of fibrosis. Another pattern is, is what I call a spider-like network of fibrosis, um, that it's more of a strandy fibrosis holding on to a lot of fluid. Those patients tend to have more of a type of swelling in their tissues. And then more recently I begun to, to realize there's a fourth pattern of fibrosis, more of a granular fat pattern in certain patients. Typically that granular type of fibrosis is right under the skin. But it's important to release all that fibrosis. And one of the main goals of liposuction is not simply just going in and so-called sucking out fat and just removing fat, but how well the surgeon understands fibrosis, understands patterns of fibrosis, and completely releases and decongests all that fibrosis. There's been a number of things that have been used externally to treat fibrosis that are making improvements, such as fascia busters that many of you know about, quadrivus therapy, other compression therapies, especially compression pumps can reduce fibrosis externally, but it, it's not gonna be as effective as the surgeon knowing how to deal with fibrosis when the liposuction surgery is done. So I'm Dr. David Amron of Lippy Logic at the Lippy Lounge. Thank you for tuning in.